we've talked about using node time with EF core and raise the pages, but what if you want to expose those node time types through an API? Well, let's smash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to continue our exploration of ASP Net and node time and APIs and bindings, and it's just going to be super exciting. Sure is. So I forgot to mention last time that I do have the sample code available on a GitHub repo, so check out the link below. And you can run the code yourself and kind of play around with it. I just forgot to mention that before, and I know some people have been asking lately about uh, where can I see the sample code for this pro the, this episode? So links down below. Now, just a quick recap. Uh, I'll also have a link to the previous episode. But what we did here is we just built a very simple app with a database uh, connecting through EF Core, where we have these local dates uh, that are not usual date time objects from .NET. They're local dates, which are types from uh, Node time. So local date is just the date, the day that month in the year uh, in in the local time zone. Like we don't actually store the time zone or anything. It's just a date. So what we're doing inside this app is uh, we have a very simple entity called public holiday with an ID, a name, and a date. And then we were displaying that on this Fraser page here uh, where we're just outputting the date and we're formatting it in the short date format and displaying the, so the date and then the name of the holiday. But what if we wanted to also expose that through an API, maybe we had a JavaScript type of application front end that wanted to get at this data. Um, so the only change I've made since the previous episode here is I've added this public holidays controller. It's just a simple API controller in .NET Core. Uh, again, it has a dependency on the database context here, and then we have a simple endpoint in the controller called get that just gets the list of all of the public holidays and returns that as a JSON payload. And in the startup here, I have added controllers. So previously it was just add razor pages. And then uh, with my endpoints, I've said map controllers. So now when I run the app, I can also go to slash API. This endpoint directly here through the browser. And this doesn't quite look like what we would expect. So what we're seeing here is we have the ID, the name. So ID one, name, years, day. And then the date is like this big block of JSON here. That isn't at all what I was expecting, but it's basically taken the, the, the actual local date type and serialized all of the properties on it. So not exactly what we were expecting, uh, but that's OK. It's easy to fix. Uh, we just have to add another good package here. And in this case, this is .NET Core 3.1, and we're using the system.txt.json serializer, because that's the default one built in. Uh, so what we need to look for here is notatime.serialization.systemtext.json. And I was happy to see today that this is actually released. Uh, previously, I had to go, it, would, there, it was only in beta, so I had to include pre-releases to install it. Ooh, uh, but but it looks like. Like um, just like just two released. days ago, a day ago. Wow! I mean, oh, I probably shouldn't say it because I leaked to him and it didn't go recording. <laughs> that's all right. I think people can see it down here. Oh, that's true. All right. Okay, I don't feel so bad anymore. Okay, so once we've added that, we just now need to tell uh, MVC or the controllers within .NET Core to actually. Here we say configure. Uh, Add JSON options. And within add JSON options, we say configure dot something node time. Did I actually add the package? I did. No, oh, right. Serializer options dot node. Uh, and then one of the things with con when you're configuring a time, uh, you need to tell it which time zone database to use. Uh, so it's looking for my date time zone provider. Let's see if I can run that. Dot 
times on spiders dot is the this is the ones um, I usually default to the times on the database that they have access to, um, which then I can get updates to the time zone database just by taking any version of the of Nota time when they get released. Okay, so now that I've configured that, I can run the app again and let's see if maybe it looks a little more sane, the output that we're getting. The results. There we go. That looks much better. So now our dates are just uh, 2020, so year, month, year dash month dash day. So this is the uh, whatever the ISO standard is for date formats. This is the ISO standard for just a date without any time on it, is how that's been serialized. So that was easy enough. Uh, the other way that we might want it, we also might want to pass in local dates as a parameter, say, to our web API. So what we might need, what we, we'll just see what that would look like, I guess. Uh, say we wanted to get all of the in an optional parameter here it would be a local date. Say after. So I want to get all of the public holidays that are after that day. Now that I have that parameter, I can just say where date is greater than greater than In and after, it's just going to return everything. Otherwise, it's going to filter based. So the nice thing here is that the model binding in ASP.NET Core will take care of converting our string over to date for me. So if I go API slash public holiday, so this still works. It's giving me all of them. But if I do this, June 30th, then it gives me only those that are after that particular date. And uh, the interesting thing here is that then, you know, if I give something that doesn't make sense, it tells me that that's no longer a valid value. Uh, if I try to mix up my day and month, it should give me the same thing. So it's kind of nice. It just it just works. And when we're when we're dealing with here, it's a strongly typed uh, local date already, so we don't have to worry about trying to convert our string over to a date, a local date, or a date time as we maybe were doing in the past. So that's all I had for today. Uh, that's using Nota time objects within or exposing them through an API. And what we'll talk about in the next episode on this in this series is actually consuming that now within a JavaScript application. There's some gotchas there because, of course, JavaScript dates have their own kind of uniqueness to them, like .NET date types do, and they're just different. So we'll get into some of those some of those specifics and how you can work around them next time. Long laser. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us on a local date themed episode of the ASP Death Monsters. And remember to like, comment, and share no matter what time zone you're in. Um, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.